Today we're going to be taking a look at how bronze era bodybuilders used to eat. I'm going to cover a couple of specific examples, but before we get into that, let me just make some general remarks. Clearly people in the late 1800s and early 1900s didn't have access to nearly as much junk food as we do today. They had candies and desserts, but overall it simply would have been easier to maintain a healthy diet as they weren't constantly surrounded by the temptation of highly palatable and cheap junk food. Just like today, diets varied from country to country and culture to culture. But I think it would be fair to generalize and say that most people would have been eating fresh, local foods which we would now consider organic. They didn't have artificial preservatives or even refrigerators, so there really weren't many choices other than fresh food. They had some basic forms of preservation like cans, but they were more of a novelty and wouldn't have been someone's primary source of food. They didn't have highly processed foods like we do today, and they also didn't have these massive supermarkets. To put it simply, the way I see it is that people would have gone shopping nearly daily, bought some fresh local ingredients like meat, eggs, fish, vegetables, fruit, etc. Then they prepared a meal at home, most likely aligned with their culture's cuisine. So if you're really set on following a diet similar to a bronze era bodybuilder, I reckon you need to ditch all the packaged foods you find in the supermarket. Rather, go to a butcher and try to find some local organic meats. You can also go to something like a farmer's market to find local seasonal fruits and vegetables. I realize it's not always quite so simple and also depends on one's economic situation, but this is probably the most reasonable way to go about it other than actually starting your own farm. If you must shop at a supermarket, you can still make the choice to buy as many raw and basic ingredients as possible. So you can cook your own meals at home and avoid processed foods. If you're young and don't have much experience cooking, I'm sure your parents or grandparents would be delighted to teach you how to make some traditional dishes. But anyway, let's move on and analyze two specific examples. Starting with Eugene Sandow, the father of bodybuilding. Sandow didn't believe in following a strict diet. In fact, he basically ate whatever he felt like with very little restrictions. In general, his diet consisted mostly of simple, wholesome foods. But he would also indulge on occasion. His meals would include things like beef, chicken, fish, cheese, fruits, and vegetables. On occasion, he would have some beer or light wine and also some sweet stuff like cake or ice cream. He believed in the importance of a mixed and balanced diet and was also a big proponent of eating slowly and thoroughly chewing food to aid with digestion. He would eat until his hunger was satiated and that's about it. Next, let's take a look at George Hackenschmidt, another one of the most prominent Bronze Era lifters. Here we have some more details. Hackenschmidt makes it clear that diet is of secondary importance to training. He notes that there are very strong people who are strict vegetarians whilst others eat a good deal of meat. Everyone should and can find out which diet best suits his constitution, and he should avoid all food which disagrees with it. He does not recommend processed sugar and says that natural sugar such as is contained in dates, figs, and other fruit is certainly preferable. In terms of how much food a man should eat, Hackenschmidt says, quote, I maintain that it is absolutely a mistake to eat a great deal. Excess is harmful, as all food which the stomach only partly digests transforms itself in the stomach or in the intestines into poisonous matter, which in time sets up bodily decay. It is true that to a certain extent digestion improves as muscle strength increases. 
but even in such cases, the progress may not be sufficient for a thorough assimilation of the extra food. The disadvantages of meat foods are, in my opinion, in the first place, that nowadays it is most difficult to obtain meat from absolutely healthy animals. I count those artificially fed in stables and pens among the unhealthy ones. And secondly, that far too much flesh food is taken. In the case of pure vegetarian food, excess is less dangerous. There's not a whole lot of information out there about the diets of other Bronze Era bodybuilders. Even when these guys wrote books, they often made little to no mention about diet. I think the reason is simply because they didn't have a special diet. They simply ate like everyone else at the time, just perhaps in slightly higher quantities to keep up with the demands of their rigorous training. Their results came from lifting weights, and if they thought a special diet was necessary to build a good physique, I'm sure they would have mentioned it. Ideas like calories, macros, and vitamins were either completely unknown or just beginning to be understood. So I'm sure none of these guys were stressing about surpluses or deficits, and they definitely weren't carrying around little food scales with them or making sure they got one gram of protein per pound of body weight every day. They even managed to survive without protein powder. Shocking, right? So in conclusion, if you want to eat like a Bronze Era bodybuilder, your meals need to look something like this, this, or this. And definitely not anything like this, this, or this. Basically, just eat whatever your grandma would make you. By the Silver Era, thoughts on nutrition started to become a bit more nuanced. So if you would like me to cover that in another video, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more old school bodybuilding content. Thank you for watching.